God bless everybody. Thank you for tuning in again. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. It's the I game, the illegitimate game with Brother Derek. Still here talking about living with God, living for God, and learning how to be led by the Spirit and not be led by our ideas. Because God has an agenda for everything and He has a plan for everything. And the answers to all of our questions are in the Bible. And our life experiences prove the Bible to be true, the good and the bad. So today I'm going to talk about a positive experience that taught me a lesson. And it just clarified a lot of things and it confirmed a lot of things. And it also provided enough revelation to understand the difference between being led by the spirit and being led by the flesh, pride, ego, our characters, our images. Because unfortunately, because of technology, we do live in this new world of the image. And the image has a lot of power and a lot of influence and a lot of control. But I'm going to talk about this experience of walking into a room. You know, I, may, I might title it the episode this episode. I might title this episode Walking Into a Room. And a lot of us know this concept. We've been to house parties. We've been to nightclubs. You know, some of us have been on blind dates. What happens when you walk into a room? Well, this happened to me at a beauty salon recently right here in Richmond. And I walked into the beauty salon, and everybody in there greeted me like I was a part of the family. I only knew one person in there, and I was meeting her for some ministry work. But everybody in there, even the customers, hey, how you doing? God bless you, brother. And in the back where the barbers were, the brothers started yelling, yo, what's up, brother? How you doing? God bless you. And it was just mad love. Now, keep in mind, I didn't know any of these people. But it was this immediate love and affirmation and validation and all those other words of encouragement and excitement and acceptance. Because we all want to be accepted and we all want to feel significant. We were all searching for significance. That's a daily thing. So I walked into this room and there was this mad love, this mad comfort. And I was just, you know, talking. Then as everyone began talking, I realized a lot of the people in that room were also Christians. So then when I left on the way out the door, Everybody started yelling and speaking again. Yo, God bless you, brother. Glad to see you. Hope to see you again. Hope to meet you again. God bless you. Can't wait to see you. You know, this the perfect greeting. And I walked back to the car, and I can't explain why, but I just felt that energy. I felt that love. So I sat in the car and just started thinking, when you walk into a room, two things can happen. Like, this word just came to me. So, And I kind of developed it over time. This, this happened last... I think it was last Friday, I think, last Thursday, last Friday. So this is what I came up with. And please, you know, leave comments and talk about your experiences walking into a room. But two things happen when you walk into a room. Number one, you feel comfortable enough to put on the show or you can feel comfortable enough to be your true self. When you feel comfortable enough to put on the show, you're, you're comfortable in your flesh and you feel good about how you appear to be in your image. But when you walk into a room and you're fed spiritually and edified spiritually and you know God is in the room, you're comfortable enough to be your true self, your flaws and all. So think about when's the last time you walked into a room and you felt vulnerable enough to open up and share your flaws instead of walking in the room making sure everybody see your new shoes. You know, you stood outside and sprayed on your cologne or your perfume real quick because you wanted to put on this great image. like. We're so great at walking in the rooms, putting on shows. Just like me and my crew, we used to do it in Atlanta. When we used to go to nightclubs, all five of us would walk in the room at the same time instead of one person trickling in. Like, we would literally stand there, open both doors, and stomp in like we were going to perform. Like, I learned that from these cats. And it was so ill because a lot of people in the club would turn around and see us coming in like we was a rap group, like we were Wu-Tang or something. Because we would all come in together like a squad. And people would stand back like we were about to perform. Like, I learned that trick. <laughs> Just brought back some good memories. But yeah, that gets a lot of attention. And for like the rest of the night, everybody would just look at me different. Like, yo, this dude, somebody. And I wasn't even famous at the time. But they taught me how to put on the show. But like I said, this barbershop, this beauty salon, this was different. This was from the inside. So you know it's the Holy Spirit. But when you walk into a room where you feel safe to be vulnerable, and you're not just, yo, look at my nice shoes, look at my nice dress, look at my nice shirt, look at my gear. You know, you got your clone, your watch, you want everybody to just love what you have. That's all material, that's all flesh. But how often do you walk into a room and you feel good spiritually? Well, I could be vulnerable. Well, I could tell these people how I feel. Or if I'm going through something bad, they could lift me up. 
or if I have a dream or some kind of goal, I could share my dreams with you and we could pray and let God open doors to make our lives better. I just feel vulnerable enough to actually love somebody. Because we also live in an age where everybody is skeptical and afraid because everybody's hurt and everybody's bitter. How often does that happen? Where you can share your heart with somebody. Now some of you could do that maybe with your mother, maybe with your father, maybe with your brother, your sister, one or two people. But have you ever walked into a room full of strangers and felt at home? You know, even, even, okay, just think about it like this, church. When you go visit churches, have you been to a church where you felt at home the first time you walked through the door? Where people just loved you and you could let your guard down? Because in this new world we live in, it's super hard to let your guard down. You don't want to do it. Some of us are married to people we can't let our guard down in front of. Because you know they're going to take advantage of you and tell somebody. Like, I've heard a lot of horror stories about marriages. Men live with women they hate. You know, even women. Like, I'm sure there's women who live with men they don't like. That's why that word narcissist gets thrown around so much. Everybody's a narcissist now. But how often do you feel vulnerable and safe and at home in the place you've been to the first time? You know, I want to learn to become that person, the welcoming, loving person, because I want people to feel safe around me because I want to feel safe around you. There's one thing I love about my gym. Like, I work out at Gold's Gym. You know, there's some good brothers in there. We always encourage each other. We big each other up, because I see you working, you see me working. But I'm not gonna, um, like, I don't want to make this video too long, but I just wanted to let people know there's a difference. Because sometimes you can walk into a room and perform. Sometimes you can walk into a room and be yourself. Try to go places where you can be yourself, your true self. Try to go places, like, especially if you're a woman, learn how to put your life into an order where you can go places you don't have to worry about getting your hair done because nobody's going to shame you. That's home, a place you can go to without worrying about your hair. You don't have to put on makeup to leave the house. Create a life where you can go to places and be yourself and not have to put on a show. You should feel comfortable being normal. You don't have to put your wig on. You don't have to put your makeup on. Like for us men, we don't have to comb our hair perfectly. Like I had, a, <laughs> I had this one friend, he wouldn't go anywhere unless he went to the barbershop first. And I'm like, dude, ain't nobody looking at you. Why do we have to go to the barbershop every three days? Like he would not go anywhere without his hair. Like he was that kind of insecure and broken. He wouldn't go anywhere without going to the barbershop first. And I'm like, ain't nobody even looking at you. It's okay just going to this event real quick. You're not even going to be on stage because he doesn't understand the value of home. Like, we we have to create home everywhere, especially if the Holy Spirit is in you, but for, for everybody else who haven't, you know, graduated there yet. Where is home for you? Where can you go and be yourself? Now, hopefully, it's your apartment, your house. If you're married, hopefully, you can go to your spouse and be vulnerable and open spiritually. Hopefully you're at a good church where you can be yourself and not have to put on the show. Like, I don't wear suits every Sunday. The church I go to, I'm comfortable in sweatpants and t-shirts. Nobody says a word to me. I can go with jeans and a t-shirt, sweater, whatever. I do not have to wear a three-piece suit, double-breasted. I don't have to wear a tie every Sunday. I wouldn't even go to a church where I have to do that because I should be able to be myself. You know, and of course, there's nothing wrong wearing a suit to church, but I'm just talking about where can you go without performing? Can you be yourself? Can you cry? You know, can you walk in with dirty shoes and still be loved the same way as if you were wearing some $200 wallabies or whatever? Where is home for you? Can you be yourself? Because there's a difference, and try to remember the difference. You walk into a room, I'm safe to perform, and everybody's gonna accept my act. I can act like I got it together, I can act like I'm rich, I can act like I'm cute, I can act like I'm awesome, or can you walk into a room and be your true self? And you might be vulnerable, you might be weak, you might be lost, you might need help. That's home. Because when those people heal you and love you correctly, then you become perfect without performing. Because the ultimate goal is to be perfect from the inside out, and then it's no longer a show, it's the real you. And the goal of God is to make you the real you. 
and you're awesome from the inside out and it's no longer a show. You become light and everyone can see it. They can see it through your eyes, they can hear it through your speech and they can feel your light from your loving acts because everything you do is now love and, act, love and light. And people know it. Peace. Thank you.